The stoic, unshakable demeanor of the warlord broke down as curiosity got the better of him. Oda Nobunaga asked his servant to fetch him some water and cloth and use it to scrub the towering giant before them. The man stood a foot taller than everyone else. He stripped from the waist up, but as vulnerable as he was at that moment, the silence that fell over the spectators mirrored their awe and fear. The servant scrubbed the man's skin with the washcloth, but it remained dark as night. Nobunaga couldn't believe his eyes, and Yasuke the Black Samurai was born. Very little is known about Yasuke's early life, but from the evidence gathered by historians, they surmised he came from either Mozambique or Ethiopia. Most historians agree that Yasuke likely came from Mozambique, as this theory aligns with accounts of other Africans from Mozambique being present in Japan. According to Fujita Midori, in his book The Tokugawa World, the first Africans to arrive in Japan as slaves, serving a Portuguese captain, were indeed from Mozambique in 1546. Furthermore, Yasuke might have belonged to the Yao ethnic group residing near the southern tip of Lake Malawi in Mozambique's more inland area. The Yao people were beginning to interact with the Portuguese around that time, a fact that historians believe might help explain Yasuke's name. It is thought that the ethnic term Yao was combined with Suke, a common suffix in Japanese male names, resulting in Yaosuke. Another prevalent theory suggests that Yasuke might have originated in Ethiopia. This idea stems from the fact that a large part of the Ethiopian population, not belonging to the Jewish, Christian, or Muslim religions, often ended up in slavery. Furthermore, the name Yasuke might have its roots in the Amharic name Yisake, or the Portuguese variant Isakwe, both derivatives of Isaac. Yasufe, a name found in Ethiopia, could also be a potential origin for Yasuke's name. In 1579, Yasuke arrived in Japan alongside an Italian Jesuit named Alessandro Valignano. Valignano was appointed as visitor of missions in the Indies at the time, a crucial role in the spreading of Christianity in Japan during the late 16th century. Since the capital city was the cultural and political hub of the country, it was the ideal location for the propagation of the religion. It was a precarious mission though, as some folks weren't really welcoming to the idea of Christianity. Still, priests during that time weren't allowed to hire soldiers or guards, so they hired valets or manservants instead, men who were adept in weapons and combat, hence Yasuke's presence alongside Valignano. While some claim that he was there as a slave, some historians strongly believe he already obtained his freedom before he met Valignano. Yasuke's arrival in Japan was sensational. The towns buzzed with amusement and excitement at this mysterious towering figure walking alongside a missionary. People climbed over one another, with some even being crushed to death because they wanted to get a glimpse of this hulking man. Furthermore, many Buddhist statues were portrayed as dark-skinned, so many people thought Yasuke was a divine visitor of Japan. Eventually, the crowds got so bad, Yasuke had to ride a horse to pass through towns, avoiding the massive riots that had formed. On March 23, 1581, Yasuke arrived at a Jesuit church in Kyoto. As expected, crowds formed, and people wanted to see him. This commotion disturbed Nobunaga, who was holding court at the Hanoji Temple. Nobunaga wanted to understand this public curiosity, so he summoned Yasuke. The warlord might have been skeptical at first because he ordered his servants to scrub Yasuke. However, upon learning that Yasuke's skin wasn't dyed in black ink, Nobunaga immediately threw a feast. While Yasuke's towering presence and impressive physique set him apart from others, it was his command of the Japanese language and his earnest character that endeared him to Nobunaga. This was most likely the consequence of Valignano's efforts to further propagate Christianity, ensuring that Yasuke was fluent in the local language. Yasuke entertained Nobunaga with tales from Africa and India, where he had likely spent time before going to Japan. In a culture that prized honor, Nobunaga favored Yasuke as he perceived him to be uninterested in subverting Japanese tradition, unlike the missionaries. Eventually, Nobunaga took him in, providing him with the name Yasuke. The warlord also bestowed him the title of samurai, giving him a private residence and salary and, most importantly, a katana. 
Many historians believe that Yasuke was already a formidable warrior before he received the title, as one couldn't simply rise through the ranks without having any battle experience. However, some believe that the concept of samurai during those times was very fluid. In fact, anyone who took up weapons on behalf of a lord could already be considered one. Nevertheless, Nobunaga frequently invited Yasuke to dine with him, an extraordinary gesture for that period, typically reserved only for the most esteemed samurai. Working under Nobunaga, Yasuke would have fought in several battles, however, the historical documents on these are scant. One of the major battles that occurred during Yasuke's service was the Battle of Tenmokuzan in 1582. Nobunaga had been at war with the Takeda clan for years. The Takeda were famous for their cavalry and posed a significant threat to Nobunaga's ambition to unify Japan under one rule. In 1582, after the death of the Takeda leader Takeda Katsuyori, the clan was weakened and fractured. Nobunaga seized this opportunity to wipe out the remaining Takeda forces near Mount Tenmoku in the province of Kai. Nobunaga, along with his ally Tokugawa Ieyasu, mobilized a large force to besiege the remaining Takeda in their last stronghold. After a 10-day siege, the Takeda forces, overwhelmed and outnumbered, eventually succumbed. Takeda Katsuyori committed seppuku, as a result marking the end of his clan. Yasuke could have been involved in the attacking forces considering his physique, skill, and strength, which was reportedly more than that of ten men. Although the extent of his role is speculative, Nobunaga's favor for Yasuke might have given him the duty of acting as the warlord's bodyguard if not serving on the front lines. Unfortunately, Yasuke's service to Nobunaga was cut short. In the final months of the warlord's unification, he was betrayed by one of his most trusted generals, Akechi Mitsuhide, right when Nobunaga was about to complete his goal of consolidating control over Japan. On June 21, 1582, while Nobunaga's forces were engaged in various battlefronts, he found himself isolated in his Hanoji temple. He was preparing to support one of his generals on the front lines when Mitsuhide directed his army toward Kyoto under the pretense of Nobunaga's orders. This move didn't raise any alarms initially, as Nobunaga frequently showcased his military prowess in Kyoto. However, when Mitsuhide's army crossed the Katsura River, Mitsuhide declared to his soldiers, The enemy awaits at Honoji! The coup d'etat was swift. Mitsuhide's forces surrounded the temple at Honoji. Nobunaga, alongside his 30 bodyguards, which included Yasuke, put up a desperate resistance, but their efforts were in vain. One enemy soldier managed to enter the temple, shooting Nobunaga in the back with an arrow. As Mitsuhide's 13,000 soldiers closed in, Nobunaga pulled the arrow out and came to the realization that they were losing. Afterward, he ordered one of his men to set the temple on fire. The formidable daimyo then sat composedly, preparing to commit seppuku ritual suicide by self-disembowelment. As the temple was consumed by flames, Nobunaga thrust a blade into his own abdomen, completing the ritual. Before his death, Nobunaga entrusted Yasuke with a final request to decapitate him and carry his head and sword to his son, thereby ensuring these wouldn't fall into the enemy's hands. Yasuke faithfully honored Nobunaga's final wish to the very end. Immediately after Nobunaga's death, Yasuke joined Oda Nobutada, Nobunaga's son who was nearby. It was Yasuke's second battle of the day. However, Nobutada only had 200 men, and the battle quickly turned into a bloodbath. Yasuke and Nobutada fought desperately against overwhelming forces, but it required a miracle for them to achieve victory with such odds. In the end, Nobutada's forces were overwhelmed, leaving Yasuke wounded on the battlefield. With Mitsuhide's forces creeping toward them, Nobutada committed seppuku on the same day his father performed the ritual. Yasuke then handed his sword to the enemies, avoiding seppuku altogether. Mitsuhide concluded that since Yasuke wasn't Japanese and was ignorant of the ritual, he needed to be thrown away. Some historians think that Mitsuhide actually respected Yasuke, and it was just an excuse so he could release him. Nevertheless, the treacherous general ordered his men to take Yasuke to the Jesuit church. The missionaries were glad Yasuke was returned safely, but that was the end of the Black Samurai's records in history.
Even though Yasuke's life as a samurai was brief, his unique story captured the imagination of many and became part of Japan's rich historical tapestry. Yasuke had ascended the ranks of samurai, serving under one of Japan's most influential warlords, and had earned Nobunaga's trust and respect. Even in the modern world, Yasuke's story continues to invoke curiosity and intrigue from many, inspiring the creation of books, films, and even anime. Even though Yasuke's records in history may have reached their conclusion, the legend of the Black Samurai lives on. We hope today's video helped inform you about some of the lesser-known topics in Asian history. And as always, thanks for watching.